So continuing from where we stopped actually, you know what we were saying is that uh, uh, um, LP is equals to 20 log P by P reference, right? That is what it was. So I can actually write this as uh, 0.1 LP by 2 equals to log P by P reference. So this follows, you know, P by P reference because then I'll put it under integration sign these values because LP is measurable. LP is measurable, and then you write it like this. Therefore, L equivalent is written in this manner: 10 log 1 by t dash. This is t dash. I mean, during the period, and 10 to the power. You know, this is nt log. This means 10 to the power 0.1 LP t dt. So you integrate this one and divide by 1 by t and then take the 10 log again. Then you get the L equivalent. So, L equivalent is nothing but the averaging over the time. And you cannot add the dBs ju just arithmetically, they are not in linear scale. So, what you do? You take nt log of p by p reference 0.1 etcetera, etcetera, integrate it that means sum it up divided by the time during which you have taken measurement that gives you the average. Now, divide it by you know take take 10 log of that and that that will give you the value. So, this is how we find out L equivalent. Then we have something called Ln which is percentile noise. Now, as I said traffic noise for example, you know you will find that maybe 10 am, 9 am is maximum. It reduces somewhat later on. So, if I plot it time versus dB level close to some arterial road or highway, it might 6 am, it might pick up 10 am, it might pick up maybe somewhere there, then it goes down again, maybe some sort of variation like this, you know variation again to 6 pm or you know 24 hour variation and all that. Now, then I should design for what? I should design for characteristics value because you understand what is characteristic value is that noise which will be exceeded only small percentile of time. I will you know I cannot cover 100 percent that would mean that too much of a cost involvement once in a while it will go beyond the value. So, my load if I want to find out I find out the characteristic value that is 90 percentile value uh, sorry 10 percentile value the noise level which will be exceeded, exceeded only 10 percent of the time. So, that I call as L 10 noise level that will be exceeded only 10 percent of the time. L 90 is what? That is almost the ambient case because you know it, it would asymptotically possibly go towards very small value like 0, no noise, but L 90 is that value which is at which is exceeded 90 percent of the time. That means that is the prevailing noise at that particular situation. Now, where does it come? It comes background noise can come from anywhere you know it will not it will make traffic another highway. For example, you measure around IIT Delhi campus let us say block 6 you know around that place uh, uh, there is a traffic lane I mean traffic uh, arterial road going by the side of it. Uh, besides that there are other roads the so noise is actually DLTA there is a Delhi Long Tennis Association or the Deer Park you know that is green area permanent green belt that is there that attenuates the noise significantly. Uh, if you if you travel if you travel uh, from you know places which are covered by green areas even in highways and you follow it in the green areas around the green areas you will find the noise level is somewhat different. The moment you come out of it you will find a distinct difference in noise you can feel it actually. So, it comes from may not may not be located nearby car may be coming from somewhere else. So, background noise comes from many places it depends upon what is the surrounding the green if there is an attenuator like trees it you know trees causes some sort of attenuation reduction or or there are barriers or similar sort of thing which we will talk about then there will be reduction. So, background noise is always there right some background noise will be there. So, that is L 90 corresponds to that noise which will be exceeded 90 percent of the time. So, in fact you got to get the distribution of noise plot the frequency diagram, plot the frequency diagram, right? Average you have found out which will be exceeded 50 percent of the time, right? 
So you can plot the frequency diagram, how much, how many times, supposing you have taken discrete measurements, we find out the number of times, relative number of times you have had between, let's say, 50 to 55 dB, 55 to 60 dB, and so on and so forth. So you can have what is called frequency diagram. From that, you can find out L90. L90 is that noise which will be exceeded 90% of the time. L10 is that noise which will be exceeded only 10% of the time. In other words, you need an insulation for L between L10 and L90. L90 is ambient, you can tolerate. L10 is the excess level, so you'd like to have as much reduction from there to close to L10. And also your human ear adapts itself relatively, so that's the idea. So these are another kind, another descriptor, percentile noise level, percentile noise level. Then is statistical measure which indicates how frequently a particular sound, sound level is exceeded. L90, 45 dBA would mean 45 dBA was exceeded 90% of the time, right? So somewhere it will specify that you know L90 should not be more than this value, or you know so you have to cut it down. You have to cut it down. Do some noise um, reduction measure. L10, L50, L90, etc. is based on probability and cumulative distribution plot of time varying sound. So that's what a percentile noise level. Some other similar parameters like single event level noise number index, there are many of them depending upon type of noise you deal with. I think we are not, we need not go into all details, then we will have to spend a lot of time on the noise itself. So that is that's what it is. With that we can now look into outdoor noise, right, and come back to the physical thing that we are talking about. We talked about first the basic fundamentals, what, what actually is uh, noise or sound, you know as we perceive. Then we looked into certain physical measures like then converted them into measurable, you know, what we can, uh, what one, one can, how to describe them, pressure level, power level, etc., etc. Then we talked about the human ear response and so on and some of the descriptors. Now we can look into how, you know, what are the protective, how do we control outdoor noise? Now if you remember, it was very simple. Supposing I have a point source like this, point source like this, you know. Supposing I have a point source like this, right? okay, so the pen should be here. And it is actually emitting sound equally in all direction. Then at a distance r, it will go spherically, spherical wave front will move in all direction. At sufficiently large distance, of course, it will be plane waves as we have talked about, one dimensional. If you go sufficiently large, take a periphery of a sphere, anyway it is a plane. So a, you know, if, if the R is large compared to the dimension of the sphere, DA area, so it, you can assume it to be a plane wave. But anyway, this power generated here, so let us say its output is W watt. So the, at this distance, it will be W by 4 pi R square, that is what we said, the intensity. And therefore, one thing you can see that uh, Intensity varies as inversely with square of the distance. But if it is a line source like a train, like a train, long train, right, sufficiently long, then you can describe it in this manner, long and cylindrical waves, let us say it is making noise, so it is something like this. So you have a line source, some, there can be some line sources actually. So then it will be what? For a line source, it is simply I is equals to W by twice pi R. But then W here is per unit length. What, you know, power, what is per unit length? Power in terms of what per unit length? So this is what it is. And that then it follows, supposing I have a plane source, plane source or very large source, it may not be related to R at all. But I think I will not come to that now. While you do look at the lighting, I mean, uh, you know, mm, skylight, light from the sky world, we will find that that is independent of the distance. So anyway, for line source it is 2 pi and if it is, if the source is in the wall, if the source is in the wall, supposing, you know, like something like a blackboard, I have a source there, supposing I put a very small, now when it becomes point source, 
point source, you can treat it as a point source, is that if the distance of the receiver is at least six times the largest dimension of the source itself. Supposing I have a speaker, you know, I have, I have some sort of a speaker, some sort of a speaker. So its largest dimension is this much, d. If my distance is greater than 6d, then I can say that, okay, I can treat this as a point. So at least 6d, it should be more. Usually, it's usually more. So 6d. Now, supposing I put a speaker onto the blackboard. I put the speaker onto a blackboard like this. Then all the sound wave is going over the hemisphere only, right? So the, this will be W divided by twice pi r square. Unlike earlier case, a point source going in all direction. Here is a point source, but because reflected sound from the wall will also go along the same direction. Reflected sound will also go on the same direction. So if I keep a speaker on the wall, actually it will be going through the whole energy will be dissipated to twice pi r square and W is the power of the source, I is the intensity at a distance, R. So, we will write it W 2 W divided by 4 pi r square. 2 W divided by, you know, twice pi r square, 2 W divided by 4 pi r square, right? So, this is how we can write. And if it is in the corner, if it is in the corner, corner of the room, you know, edge, it is in the edge, then, you know, it is somewhere here. So, it will go in the what you call quadrant only, so the quadrant only, one quadrant only. If it is in, you know, this is this is your room. That's what I have drawn. So somewhere here I have placed it, right? So it will go through the quadrant only, because top is also blocked, side is also blocked. So it will go through the quadrant only, and I'll have it for source in edge W is. It was two. Now here I put in four because it will go through pi r square, not 4 pi r, one fourth of it. And if I put it in this corner, it will be 1 8. So, if I put it in this corner, it will be 8 w divided by 4 pi r square. So, all I am saying is that I can multiply by a factor depending upon the nature of the source, whether it is also emitting the sound on the back, back side or reverse side in all direction or only in specific direction. So, this is called, this we define in general terms W q. So, we write in general terms W q divided by 4 pi r square. What is q? q is called directivity factor, because sources are directional. Sources are directional, you know like, uh, uh, you might have seen in dramatics sometime, you know by deliberately. Uh, deliberately, uh, uh, you know, the actor or actress, per, you know, talks with your, with your face along the, along the, along the uh, back screen side, you know, sometimes, sometimes. I mean, the, the demand, the dramatics demand. You hear actually less, you will hear less. So, when somebody is speaking to you directly, Right, you hear right much more than if somebody is speaking. So actually, human voice is also directive, directional. I'll say it's directional. The front side one is speaking, then you hear better. But someone is speaking from the you know other side, looking at other side and speaking, you don't hear. Of course, the vision has something to do because your perception is also related to seeing. Also, it's not seeing, listening. They go together. So it's not just idea. Uh, you know uh, what you call. Uh, independent of each other, isolated ones. So anyway, what I am trying to point out is there is something called directivity factor. Sources can be directional. Machines are very much directional. Machines are very much directional. For example, you get the noise that you get behind a jet engine in an aircraft is much higher than if you are on the side. So that's 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 what it is. So the Q is called directivity factor, and noise sources are directional. And you define it something like this: This is my source speaker. If it was point source, it's point source because sufficiently large distance. If it was emitting sound equally in all direction, I would have got, uh, and, and you know, the sphere. If I take a sphere everywhere, I will get same intensity. 
But if it is directional like this, along this direction it has got more, then I will get intensity here, more intensity, you know, it is ellipsoid rather than a sphere, rather than a sphere and backside there is very little, backside there is very little. So, directivity factor Q, if I go back to my previous slide, if I go back to my previous slide, it will be defined like this Q is nothing but I divided by W by 4 pi r square, right. And what is W by 4 pi r square? It is the I for all direction and you know equal omnidirectional source which goes equally in all direction. So, I call it I 0. So, I by I 0. So, directivity factor is defined by I along theta I theta divided by I 0 or I theta may be subscript. So, measure the intensity along the direction concerned from a reference angle. If it is in two dimensional pretty easy because you can define by only one angle right. If it is two dimensional you can define by only one angle. So, I theta divided by I 0. I 0 is what? The intensity that would have been there if the source was emitting equally in all directions equal in all directions. So, that is we call Q directivity factor that is directivity factor right. So, directivity factor is defined like this right. So, if I have this ok I will come back to this slide again later on. So, if I define like this Q is equals to I by I 0 take 10 log of both sides take 10 log of both sides followed from here take 10 log of both sides Q is equals to I by I 0 I theta by I 0 right this is the i theta. So, q theta let me call it directivity factor along any direction. So, this is q theta take 10 log of q 10 log of q theta is equals to 10 log of i theta by i 0 log of sorry log I have missed and this can be written as 10 log of how, how can I what can I write? I can write 10 log of 10 log of i theta divided by i reference. This I can write as this I can write as 10 log of i theta by i ref divided by i 0 by i ref which will mean that I can write it 10 log of i by i theta by i ref minus 10 log of I 0 by I ref and what is this? This is S I L 0 and this is S I L theta. So, sound intensity level. Similarly, I can write for pressure level also because it will be only rho c coming in which will cancel out. So, so you can write this Q is equals to you know 10 log q is equals to 10 log q is equals to 10 log q log of q is equals to this right and this is what is written on top of this one this is what is written. So, directivity factor is written as 10 log it is written as 10 log directivity factor is directivity directivity factor q is n t log q would be or 10 log q is equals to first let us write this 10 log q is equals to s p l z theta minus s p l 0 s p l theta minus s p l 0. So, q would be written as you know uh, this divided by this delta this difference divided by 10 and n t log of that n t log of that n t log of that. So, I can find out q q is nothing but difference in the levels along that direction and that would have been there if it was equally going in all direction divided by 10 n t log of that that will give you q. And we define then directivity index what is directivity index this difference we call it directivity index. So, directivity index is nothing but level along theta direction minus level along equally emitting for a source equally emitting in all direction that is called as directivity index directivity index. So, directivity directivity index and so how is directivity factor and directivity index related? Q that is directivity factor 
is nt log of nt log of directivity index divided by 10 directivity index divided by 10 right so that's what it is right so that's that's how we define that's how we define directivity index. right so let's use make use of this somewhat we said that intensity along any direction therefore would be equals to wq divided by 4 pi r square so if i know the power of the source if i know the directivity for machines this is known in fact they test it in, in what are called an echoic chambers they test the direction which direction how much is the intensity that can be tested so uh, one can test that uh, but noises like you know um, you can you can actually find out noises like even from the uh, for for let's say let's say point i am considering a point not a wall a point the noise coming from the highway side is more than that would come from the other side from from, from the other side you know so you can actually measure so source should be directional going away from the highway as you know so so you can find out q for specific cases and i theta will be given by q theta divided by this now let me define that's right that's what it is so i have defined in terms of pressure also pressure also so this is all that i am saying i have already explained this directivity index is spl 0 minus spl uh, and i theta is equals to q theta is so w q 0 divided by you know w uh, q theta divided by 4 pi r square already I have mentioned this and SPL theta therefore would be if I take 10 log of both sides and div first divide by I reference. So divide this by I reference, divide this by I reference right and then take 10 log of this. So let me not put this right now. So, I theta divided by I ref will be equals to W Q theta Q 0 Q to Q theta divided by I ref let me call it here into 1 by 4 pi r square am I right I reference if I divide both sides by I reference I get something like this this is Q 0 Q theta this Q theta because this should be Q theta Q theta. So, general equation is q theta into the 4 pi r square right. I s stands for for the source going equally in all direction I mean this should be theta this should be theta not p 0 this should be theta divided by I s. I s stands for what I was talking of I s is synonymously I am using as I 0 equally in all direction. So, otherwise you might get confused and this is theta p you know this is p theta square this p theta square etcetera. So, I can divide both sides by I reference, I will get something like this, take 10 log of both sides, what will be this if you take 10 log of I by I ref, 10 log of I, I by I ref that will be S I level intensity level right S I L intensity level at, at any direction at any distance theta right and right hand side W by I ref, what is the value of W ref? that is also taken as 10 to the power minus 12. So, numerically I ref and W ref are same that is what I told you. So, this if I take 10 log of this uh, S i l will be equals to 10 log you know W by W ref which I will call as L w 10 log W by W ref remember we call them L w power level of the source. So, this I call as L w then 10 log q 10 log q is what 10 log q was what directivity index i defined it like this so i'll have lw plus directivity index and what about this minus 10 log 4 pi minus 20 log r so minus 10 log 4 pi minus 20 log r do i can i write like this r square 1 by r square. So, 1 by r square will be you know if I take 10 log 1 by r square because these are all product. 
So, I can separate them out. So, if I separate them out, I get this expression which I just tried to derive for you, oh, which I just tried to derive for you, which I tried to derive for you actually just now. Let me just erase this out. Oh. Right. So, this is what I was trying to come back. So, S p you know it can be written as 20 log r and this is related to 10 log yeah, 4 pi. So, 4 pi is uh, if you take uh, 4 pi how much does it come to 4 pi would be uh, 4 into about 12 1 point something 11 10 log of you know 10. So, 10 multiplied gives you approximately 11. So, it is something like this right. So, this is power level, this is power level and there is a slight difference of intensity level and pressure level. What is the difference? Because you remember intensity level was, intensity level was I by I reference, 10 log of that and in case of pressure level, it will be 10 log of P reference square, right. And if I write it, write it further, I will write it 10 log i, you know, p square by rho c and this will be p reference square divided by rho c standard, rho c reference. So, if my rho c reference and rho c is more or less similar or same because it is a function of temperature, rho is a function of temperature and velocity of sound in air. So, if they are more or less same, then they will be SPL and SIL will be same. There is a small difference we generally tend to neglect that and therefore, we are writing straight away SPL is equals to PWL di 20 log r minus 11 dB. So, this is this is a this is an expression which you would like to use. One thing it shows whatever may be the power level of the source, if I increase the distance my noise level will be less. So, keep your receiver noise sensitive areas or noise sensitive spaces as much as far as away from the source, as far as away from the source. So, external level control and this is exactly what we use in town planning as well, we will come to that. So, attenuation due to this is one thing and we have not assumed anything, we have assumed that simply it is attenuating because it is passing through larger area from the source there is no absorption by the there is no absorption by the atmospheric absorption we have not taken into account. All that we are saying is that it would be uh, you know uh, dispersing over a larger area now right. So, but there is some amount of attenuation due to air because it is vibrating the molecules are vibrating about their mean position of equilibrium. So, obviously, there will be from frictional losses there is moisture present in the air. So, depending upon the frequency, higher the frequency air will absorb more, some energy will be converted into you know other other sort of thermal and so on and it also depends upon inversely depends upon relative humidity. Higher the relative humidity multiplied by some 10 to the power 8 dB. So, it is a function of R frequency relative humidity into 10 to the power minus 8 dB. So, attenuation due to air is very small we can neglect it, but if the frequency is high then it comes into you know it, it, it might be 1 2 dB. For example, if the frequency is something like 10 k. So, this this will get nullified 10 k square 10,000 means 10 to, power, 10 to power 4 and square of it is 10 to power 8 this will so and, and relative humidity in percentage, percentage and you express that and R distance depending upon the distance. So, it might be some uh, some some value uh, which is comparable to otherwise talking in terms of 50 dB, 60 dB, etcetera, etcetera. Small frequencies this is not there. So, it is a minor minor absorption in totality it never the effect is not more than 2, 3 percent you know in totality it will be 5 percent. So, we tend to neglect it, but you want to calculate out you can calculate out depending upon the frequencies all right. Uh, one more issue is related to one more issue is related to 
effect of wind, effect of wind. <coughs> you know the velocity gradient is like this. Remember velocity gradient we talked about, velocity is higher. So, what it will tend to do? It will tend to actually bend the spherical wave front in open space. It should have gone equally in all direction, but since the velocity here is higher, here it is less, it will have a tendency to cause a rotation of this. This causes a shadow region here. So, in the windward side of the source and kinds of excess noise on the leeward side. side. So, when you are doing town planning or something like that, one can keep that in mind, right. So, the source here the effect will be much less if the wind direction is like this, right. So, it will effect will be much less where here it would be higher. So, if you have a uh, of course, these days there is no steam engine, but steam engine making that whistle, right. So, or similar sort of thing, you know, you keep those sources in leeward direction of the city. Industries should be on the leeward direction of the you know residential areas, so that you get much less. The second effect is related to temperature effect, temperature effect, temperature effect is what happens is as the temperature daytime for example, uh, you know daytime and night time. Now, daytime temperature will be high here near the ground daytime temperature will be high near the ground and night time what will happen temperature will be less near the ground because it will radiate it out. So, if the temperature is in decreasing along this direction density is a function of temperature you will have higher density at lower temperature. As a result the refraction occurs each layer behaves like a you know there are layer of airs then with different densities. So, refraction of sound would from higher density to lower density, it has a tendency to bend away from from the you know bent away from the normal. So, what happens is this side my density is higher, it will have a tendency to bend towards the normal, bend towards the normal. So, it will bend towards the normal, whereas if the temperature is increasing along this direction, it will have a tendency to bend away from the normal. So, you find that there is a sound shadow region here, excess sound sound region here. This might be one might keep that in mind for tall buildings, very tall buildings, because you might find that in the daytime you know the noise level, same source is close to it might be less at the lower floor, might be might be somewhat higher, not, not very large, but somewhat higher right, somewhat higher in the. So, this is other other temperature effect. So, we will again take one or two questions and uh, then we will close for the day. So, we'll look into next what is called barrier. So, one thing before we close, essentially distance is a good way to reduce the noise, but you must keep this kind of effect must be in mind, must take this effect the direction of wind, if it is a tall building wind temperature effect, temperature inversion effect and uh, then of course, directivity of the sound, directivity of the source itself, source itself might be directional. So, distance is a good way and that is what is used in urban planning and when within building also you can take that kind of uh, situation into account. Okay. So, questions I will take.